Hello and welcome to the first episode of From Zero to Dreamfort. This will be a short series where I take you through all the steps of building and enjoying Dreamfort, building it from scratch from the blueprints offered with the DF Hack uh, distribution. So in this first episode, we're going to go through and do a little tour of a completed dream fort. Look what a completed, bustling, happy fort looks like, or what what it might look like when you get done building it. And we'll do a quick demo of some of the tools you'll be using, how to recover from mistakes while using them, and finally how to follow along in the, in the walkthrough and the help. So I'll be talking more about these levels in detail as we go through and build the fort. So this, I'll just give a quick overview of what's going on on each level. Up here on the surface, we have our trapped hallways for invaders and our main entranceway for caravans and you know regular, regular dwarves going in and out. We have our squads here training in melee, some beehives for honey and royal jelly, farms, nest boxes. Our trading depot is over here with our trade goods getting accumulated here. They're split into um, inorganic and organic goods so that we can separate them easily for different traders with different ethics. We have some uh, levers up here for controlling the bridges, especially useful when invaders are coming through. And then we have our grazing pasture up here at the top. We have a milking and shearing station right here and a staging area for caught wild game that might fall into our cage traps up here, or invaders that could run through and get caught in our cage traps and weapon traps along the side. Going down one level, we have our farming area here. We have storage for food, brewables over here and cookables over here, butcher, kitchen, and up here we have some starting areas for use while we're just getting our our fort originally built. We won't have our main facilities up and running yet. So we have a small dormitory over here, a dining area, tomb, and some offices for our manager and bookkeeper. Over on the left we have brewing and farming workstations and a quern and screw press. Ah, well thank you. Down at the bottom, we have our fishery, tannery, and garbage collection area that just gets dumped into a gigantic pile that gets uh, slowly deteriorated away. Going down another few levels, here we have our industry level, where we have almost all the workshops that we need, apart from the few that are up on the farming level. We have textiles in this section, stone up here, wood related industries on the left and finally metalworking industries down at the bottom going down one more level we have our services where we have our main dining hall area and dance floor this also serves as a tavern our primary food and drink storage our archery range for our um, mark stores jail cells nice and well furnished our interrogation room, nice and adorned with, with chains, and finally our hospital. Each one of these is individually wallable off in case you get a weir beast infection and need to contain the outbreak. And then here we have our, our dump zone, our garbage dump, where things get brought where we no longer need them. Going down just a few more levels. We have our guild halls and temples, our uh, non-denominational temple up the top, and then other temples as we need them, library at the bottom, and then on the corners we have our guild halls. These are uh, not assigned when you first start the fort, but as you, as you get more population who require these things, you can start to allocate them here. Down one more level is our suites for our nobles and administrators. We have our mayor has some quarters here. Uh, Captain of the guard has some cheaper quarters up here. The count, well, these automatically get assigned to your baron slash count slash duke as they uh, promote through the ranks. And then these will get automatically assigned to the outpost liaison and the monarch as they join our fort later on. Down another level here is our apartments, 
where all of the regular dwarves sleep. They each have their own section here. And there are several levels of apartments because you can have many dwarves. They need one bedroom each. This layout can accommodate up to 200 of them. This third level is not yet furnished yet. We'll be doing that as a demo in just a minute. And then down at the bottom we have our crypt. Sparsely used right now, but as you as you achieve more calamity in your fort, this will quickly get filled up and you can go build yourself another crypt. And that is the quick path through the fortress. All right, let's look at some of the tools we'll be using here. All right, let's go back to this, up to this level and work with quick fort. You can start quick fort by clicking on the uh, by clicking on the tool name here in the context menu. It also has this hotkey, control shift Q. So if you're just up on this screen here, control shift Q will bring it up directly. It'll ask you which blueprint you want to load and we can type in Dreamfort to set the filter. If you just type that in and leave it like that, we'll bring it up next time. Your, your filter will already be there. So if you just type in Dreamfort, it'll just filter to Dreamfort blueprints and we can just access them quicker. Here we want to look at the apartments, so let's pull out the uh, the meta blueprint for apartments, which is everything other than the original digging, which we've already accomplished here. So double click on that to bring it up. <coughs> you see the shadow on uh, where it's going to be applied. Red means that it can't be applied there, so you're probably misaligned. And the diamonds mean that you've, something is going to happen there and it's going to happen successfully. So all of these blueprints are keyed around the center tile of your staircase. So move the mouse there and click, and it'll lay it all down. This tells us that to enqueue manager orders, that means that you go over here and you click generate manager orders. This will tell us exactly what is needed for the blueprint and will enqueue exactly those manager orders uh, to be sent to the workshops for production. And right click to exit out of there and now we have everything laid out. If you see just the shadow like this, that means that an item is already attached and it's going to be built. Let's go make that top priority so they do it right away. And if you have the little clock icon, this is building plan saying that uh, you requested that something be built here, but we don't yet have the materials ready. As they start being applied, you'll see they will get assigned here and the, and the clock icon will disappear. So what if we made a mistake? What if we applied this in the wrong spot? So we've we had our apartments up here and say that we accidentally clicked in the wrong spot. Say we clicked here and it got applied successfully, but now this is all all wonky. Okay, so you got two options. Let's pause it for a second. You can bring up mass remove, which again can be brought up from the context menu, mass remove, or you can use the hotkey of control M and that will bring up here. So when we applied that blueprint, we not only laid down a lot of buildings, but we also lay down a lot of zones, which are now all in crazy misaligned mess. So let's bring up mass remove and say, get rid of the buildings, get rid of the zones. And you just select everything. You can see that it immediately removed all of the buildings that had not yet been built. And for the ones that have already been built, it'll mark them as to quickly be removed. And your doors will expediently come and remove them. bring up our zones again you see this is all gone so let's try that again let's bring this to apartments 2 and lay that down once more right here we don't need to enqueue manager orders because we did that last time and now it's done correctly check the zones all happy okay the second way that you can get rid of a bunch of stuff that you accidentally laid down is with quick Ford itself so we'll bring that back up and load the apartments blueprint position it where you had it and then you can hit the capital U over here, the undo blueprint. Now, of course, clicking on it with your mouse isn't going to work so well because we've moved it out of, spot, out of the spot where it's supposed to be. So move the mouse there and hit the actual keyboard, shift U. And that will undo exactly what that blueprint applied and nothing else. So bring up the zones again. It is completely clear. All right, now that is the basic tour. Let's go back up to the surface here. And I'll show you how you can get help while building these blueprints. So let me bring up the browser here and go to docs.dfhack. 
and that will bring go to, bring you to here. And if you go down to the QuickFort Blueprint Library, not only will you see some annotated screenshots of DreamFort, but if you click on this link here, it'll take you to the actual blueprints online. If you click on the help spreadsheet, it'll take you to the overall walkthrough. This help is available in game if you don't want to break out and go to a browser. If you go back here and into, into QuickFort and bring up DreamFort help and load up the blueprint, this is actually the same help text that is right here. It is just a little bit easier to read in a browser than in the font inside the game. There's also a handy checklist that you can refer to as you go through the blueprints that will help you keep your place and give you hints of when to apply the next blueprint so you don't get lost. And that is it for our first episode. I'll see you next time when we actually start getting prepared to embark and going through all the pre-embark steps. I'll see you there.